the story that you told the other night about the uh, Baptist Hospital. Yeah. I'm going to tell you a story to go with that story. In 1997, my dad had surgery there for a uh, carotid stent to be put in his carotid artery. He was having knee surgery, and the doctor's pre-op here in Jackson put the stethoscope to his neck and, and said he heard a swishing sound. So they took him, they advised him to go to Memphis. We went to Memphis, and uh, they said, yeah, you've got 95% blockage in the, uh, in the carotid. So they did the procedure there. I'll have to pull this out of the way. I can't find it. Um, and I mean, it was a big risk doing it, placing the stent. They had to go up through the leg and go and do it. And, and said that there was a possibility of, of, of major stroke. Mm -hmm. So anyway, he did it. He came through fine. I went to pick him up. He had a Lincoln, new Lincoln at that time. And I went back down there to pick him up. And I drove to the Baptist Hospital there. We get, I don't know, maybe halfway home. And he's still grouchy and groggy like he's got some effects from some kind of medication they may have him on or something. He said, Stan. I said, yes, sir. He said, what time is it? And I told him time. I said, Daddy, where's your watch? I don't know. I said, Daddy, that's a precedent Rolex. He said, Ah, somebody's got it on the arm. Let them enjoy it. I don't care. I said, I get home to that house on Country Club, and I call Baptist Hospital, third floor. I said, have you uh, had anything turned in? They said, we know what you're calling for. I said, they said, we've got it. I said, oh, my God. I said, you mean somebody turned it in? I said, yes, sir. I said, we've got it in the safe right now. I said, well, I'll be down the next two or three days. Well, you'll have to show verification. I said, well, naturally so. I said, I'll come back down there and pick it up. So he gets wind that I'm going down there. He says, well, you go down there, you come by the house. I said, they got that wad. I said, yes, sir, I'm going to go by and get it. He said, you come by the house before you go get it. When I get there, he hands me a letter with his stationery. It's baby blue. It's got a pair of blue suede shoes sitting on top of the world. It says Carl Perkins. And he just hands it to me. He said, you, whoever turned that watch in, you don't leave till it gets, this gets to their hand. I said, you got it. So I get there to the third floor. I show verification who I am. And they said, uh, I asked them, I said, I've been told that I cannot leave here until the person that turned that watch in that I hand this envelope to. I said, is that person here? They said, yes, sir. I said, she's a housekeeper. She cleans rooms. And she found it in the nightstand beside the bed. I said, is she working now? They said, yes, sir. I said, can you page her and get her to this desk? I said, we can do that. Here comes a little old woman toddling up through the hall. I strongly suspected it was her when I saw her at the end of the hall coming this way, and it was. And one of the nurses introduced me to her. She was very kind, very quiet. I said, ma'am, I've been told that I can't leave here until this, this gets in your hand. She looked real quizzical looking at the nurses. I said, here it is. And she looked at me like, what am I supposed to do with it? I said, it's yours now. I said, you're free to open it or you're free not to open it, but it's yours, whatever you want to do. I've done my job. And so she starts very meticulously opening it up. Well, in it, he has written this in longhand letter. 
thanking her for the person that she was, her honesty, and how good it made him feel to know that a person would be that honest to do such a gesture to him. He didn't care nothing about the watch. And in the letter was twenty one hundred dollar bill, two thousand dollars that he had stuffed in that envelope with that letter. Well, she starts crying and carrying, and all the nurses are crying and carrying on. I'm sitting there tearing up, wiping tears, and I said, "Well, you got your reward. I've got the watch. I'm ready to go back to Jackson." So I go go home. Like I said. He cared nothing about it. The highest price Rolex you could buy. He didn't buy it. My mother bought it for him. This is the watch. That's the watch. Wow. Look at all those diamonds. That's 18 karat gold. Diamond bezel. That is beautiful. Amazing. And he didn't care nothing about it. It didn't mean nothing to him. That's a great story, Stan. And you know, after he died, my mother gave me this watch. She said, I want you to have your daddy's watch. I couldn't wear it. I just put it up in the jewelry box. And it laid there for many years. I wouldn't wear it. I just wouldn't wear it. So a couple of Christmases ago, it, it, it needed some work done on it. It was battered up where he washed and waxed on a bus with it on. It just messed up. It was Carl Perkins' fight. <laughs> so, she sends it to Rolex and has it redone, and they send it back, and she gives it to me for Christmas. Yeah, it's beautiful. It looks awesome. So, great, great story. So man. when I pressure wash, I have to take it off. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs>